Okay, we are live on Facebook and we are recording. Uh, I'm uh, John Mercer, president of Las Vegas Tri Club, and I've got Ted Girard uh, from UNLV. We're colleagues at UNLV, also working on sports science. Hey, Ted, how's it going? Good, yeah, really good today. Beautiful uh, day. So, uh, yeah, so I'm really excited to talk about uh, some of our mistakes uh, and, and the lessons that we've learned uh, along the way. I really was racking my brain this week, uh, coming up with some good anecdotes. I hope uh, I hope you've done the same. Uh, I didn't have to think that hard because I've made plenty, <laughs> but I'm not alone because uh, we posted that on Facebook and the number of responses we got and the other mistakes that other people have made have really uh, sort of inspired me and uh, made me feel okay about the mistakes I've made. Yes, yes. So um, I'll, I'll kick it off here. So the number one mistake, and it, it, it's so ironic because it, and it's a big, big thing. And, and, and I know we, we always, 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 always talk about it in triathlon is never do something new on race day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And we all make this mistake all the time. I can't tell you, like I was, I was sitting, sitting here writing down my mistakes and so many of them were that, even though I know that's the cardinal sin. Yeah. But you always, you know, there's always this something little, something, you know, something that, you, oh, I, oh, I could do that. Oh, that, oh that, how good would that be? And I want to say like 80% of my mistakes were something that I did on race day that I hadn't done before. Yeah. So uh, I don't know about you, John, but, um, you know, how many times have you heard the, you know, don't ever try anything new on race day? Or have you said it? Every race. Like, every, every race. race. Here. Yeah. Yeah, so do you have one in do, every, do you have one thing in particular that you tried on uh, race day that didn't work out? Yeah, I'll give you I'll give you the, the one that was the last one that just happened to me the last season. So I um I had this try uh, a top. So it was a, a Team Canada top and um it was it was one of those that zipped in the back. So for like ITU racing they make yep. you have a back zipper only. And I didn't have, um, I, I, I raced in it before and I, I had trouble getting the zipper down. So um, I just didn't have the shoulder flexibility to quite reach it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was like, you know, I need a little system here. So I was like, okay, I'll tie a shoelace to it. Okay, no problem. So I was in Canada and I was with my parents and my dad's like, oh, I got something even better than that. He gave me like this little like metal ring for a keychain, like a little tiny, tiny one. Oh. Hooked that on, and I'm like, oh, this is perfect. All right. I practiced with it a couple of times. So um, I, I, I go into the race, I race, I get out of the swim, and I literally cannot get my wetsuit undone. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, I'm yanking, trying. I, I, but the, this is like on my tri suit, not my wetsuit. Yeah. So somehow that little ring had opened up and it caught on my zipper of my wetsuit. Oh. And so as I'm running into T1, to T1, I'm trying to get my wetsuit and I'm yanking on this thing and I, and I literally cannot get it. So I had to stop. I found a volunteer and I'm like, can you help me get this thing uh, undone? And they're like monkeying around with it. It probably took like 30 seconds. Oh. All because, you know, and, and it wasn't even that hot that I needed to actually unzip it while I was running, you know, because I was in Canada yeah. of all places. But it was just like, like something so small as this little tiny ring that, I mean, I, I, I don't know how I, I don't know how it even got caught into the zipper of my, of my wetsuit, but it was one of those things. And what, you know, and, and I look back and I'm like, well, what a silly thing to do. Yeah. It seems smart at the time. That's the problem with all these mistakes. They seem like they seem smart at the time. Yeah. I think in, sometimes in retrospect... we, I think sometimes we overthink things and then we, we decide to do something uh, without any real basis. Uh, and so the one you, the story you just told reminded me of uh, what happened to me in Norseman. Uh, and Norseman is a cold race uh, so I knew when, you know, the water, you know, it's 55 degrees, uh, Fahrenheit. 
and uh and then you got to get on your bike and i and i was worried about getting too chill coming from the desert you know training doing all our training in this hot stuff and then you know trying to bike in 40 degrees fahrenheit after swimming in 55 degrees uh, fahrenheit water so i actually decided just to wear a swimsuit under my wetsuit and then i would put my uh tri kit on uh dry and i thought that was going to be a good thing all right so again did i practice that no i didn't it was just one of those things where i said oh this will this makes sense now i'll be dry you know getting on the yep. bike and so uh now norseman is a different race you're you're racing against other people more so than the clock so i knew i had a little bit of time so i wasn't you know you're not because you just need to be the top 130 to a certain spot in the race and then you can you can finish the race uh, right. so i get out of the swim had a great swim and oh and the other part is um there's no volunteers to support you uh you have to bring your own volunteer so laura my wife was uh was my my support for the entire race and the, and your support person has to follow you the whole time so uh she you know meets up with me getting out of the swim and uh i run over uh to transition take off my wetsuit uh there's no tent so i had to put a towel on take my my swimsuit off she helps you know get the tri gear out uh this is my long sleeve uh norseman uh tri kit i put it on and struggled to get it on because it was wet and I'm like, I can't believe how hard this is to get on wet. And but I'd never practiced it. And so now this is the first yep. time I'm trying to put it on. So we're struggling, we're fighting, we're getting it on, got it on, and then all of a sudden I realize, oh, it's on backwards. <laughs> Cause we'd never practiced <laughs> even trying to put it on. And so she was handing it yep. to me one way. My brain is still, you know, post swim effort. And uh, and so now all of a sudden I'm standing there with my wet my tri suit on backwards. And I just rip it off, you know, you know, in the, you know, naked in the, in the transition at, at that time and then switch it around and put it back on. And yeah, don't try anything new, practice it all prior to race day. <laughs> yeah. And, and the other thing is, is that you could have uh, practiced it correctly uh, and still made the mistake in, on the, in the race. And that's the other thing yeah. that does happen, yeah. right? Yeah. Is we do practice and then still we mess it up, yeah. you know, cause the, and I think a lot of times um, the mess ups that we have are due to stress, mm -hmm. right? When I was reading through a bunch of the, um, the messages that people posted on Facebook, a lot of it was like mistakes people wouldn't normally make, right? But yeah. under the stress of, of race day and, um, you know, and, and, and one of the things that happens to me and I think it happens to a lot of people is I don't sleep well the night before a race. Mm -hmm. And so then you wake up, you're, you're, you're a little bit tired. You're not, you're, you're a little foggy headed and you're not thinking right at race morning. And so, you know, I think a lot of the mistakes come from, uh, come from that, the stress and the, and the lack of sleep. So, um, I'll give you another, uh, mistake. So, uh, this was actually a, a race I did in, in Milwaukee it was the nationals. And it's the first time I'd ever traveled to a race. And this is a simple, a simple mistake is that we booked a hotel and did not look at how close it was to the train tracks mm. and to a very active train track. Uh oh. So the first you know, two nights before the race where, you know, we check in, it's like pretty late at night. We check in and almost every hour on the hour, this train goes by and <laughs> the loudest possible horn, you know, like the, my cousin Vinny, uh, yeah. movie and it's just like unbelievable how loud this thing was and it, it woke me up every hour and this was two nights before the race the smart me should have said you know what i cannot stay here the race night i need to find something else somewhere else wherever i yeah. i I'll, i'd better off sleeping in my car in, a, in an abandoned parking yeah. lot of a, of a walmart than than this but no no you kind of forget about it during the day and you're taking care of business and then the night before the race same thing just every hour and you know the worst obviously couple of nights sleep ever yeah. and you know subsequently did not race very well and did not feel very well but it, but it, but a mistake on my part for not first of all now i always look yeah. like i look how close is the hotel or the or the condo or wherever to a um to a train track or to the highway mm -hmm. 
right? And I, uh, one is interesting is, is Oceanside, because a lot of the places in Oceanside are right on that train track. Yeah, that's right. And, and so now whenever I book for a place in Oceanside, I always look like, where is it? Where even potentially where are the bedrooms on the side of the house <laughs> yeah. where that train track is? Cause it, that's a loud train. Yeah. And it goes, and it goes by quite often. So that's a, that's another one for me and that's more travel related, but still uh, a mistake that I, that, that, that I tried to not make again. Well, that's great. And, and you know, the other part of a hotel is booking on the first floor rather than second, third, fourth, especially if it's the fourth floor without an elevator and you're post race trying to get your bike up to your room. So I, I, I think that's great advice is um, have that plan uh, really, really scope out where you're going to stay. But I like your, your general point that it's, it is a lot of mistakes we're making is stress related. And, and that's why you need to practice these things ahead of time so that you reduce the amount of thinking that you need to do during a race. And I even, yeah. you know, get to a point where, you know, pre-race, you got to have that checklist, you know, Oh, yeah. I, you and I, we've been racing a while, you know, for a long time. I've been racing since mid eighties and yet I still make mistakes in terms of what to bring. And I posted, you know, a couple of things I forgot to different races and it's partly because of the stress and, and just not having that checklist. So I remember even with, with our Las Vegas tri club, uh, we had a duathlon out at uh, Cottonwood area and uh, drive out there, got my mountain bike all set up. And then I realized that, I uh, didn't have my run shoes. I just had my sandals. And so I'm like, well, now what do I do? I, I, one, I don't have bike shoes. I don't have run shoes. You know, all I got is these sandals, sort of like a, not a really a Birkenstock, but that type of sandal. So I'm like, okay, well, we only got about 45 minutes before the start. I could drive home. Nope, I'm not going to make it. So I ended up just finding a roll of duct tape and uh, duct taping my sandals onto my feet. And I'm like, okay, well, let's see how this works out. And I, <laughs> the good thing was it was, uh, it was dirt and it was mountain biking. So I had flat bottom pedals anyhow. So that was yep. good. Uh, now I have to admit that someone did come along and said, hey, I got an extra pair of shoes. But by then I was already committed. And I'm like, now I'm wondering if I can do it. You know, can I run yep. in my- Yeah, seat? can I actually do this? Up? <laughs> so now, now it became more of a challenge at that point. But I think that's the, the other message is, you know, when you, when you have a mistake, you got to adapt and you got to yeah. figure out what to do next. And so I just taped my, my uh, sandals onto my foot and I don't remember if I was second or third, whatever it was, but I uh, still had a great race, had a great run. And all of a sudden I realized like, oh, well, maybe, uh, maybe the running shoes aren't as important and maybe you have more flexibility uh, in terms of what you can run. And of course, from the research that we do, we know that that's the case. Yep. That you can run in a wide variety of shoes uh, and your body does figure it out. It's just how long you run in them uh, could, could, uh, could cause some problems, but you got to adapt. You got to adapt when a mistake yep. does happen. So John, do you have uh, checklists? Do I have what? Oh, check checklists. Um, Okay, so uh, when I do an Ironman race, I do make a checklist and I have a spreadsheet in Excel and uh, yep. I do modify it and I do update it, but there are times I ignore it. So, but I do, I do so, have a pretty extensive one. So I'm gonna share, I'll share my, maybe I can share my screen. Oh, you, oh you've disabled it. I don't know if you can- Oh, no, let me, let me change it. Yeah, because I'll share, I'll just share one of my checklists. I get, I have checklist of checklists. Okay, you should be able to share now. Share. All right, let me see if I can find mine then. Uh, no, it's... Share. Okay, so this is my, these are my notes of things to, to bring. And now obviously I change this depending on, you know, what type of race it is. But these are, this is like my general, general notes. Mm -hmm. And this is just in a, a, a program uh, just called notes. And I can actually, I uncheck them all. Yep. And, and then I check them as I, as I, as I pack. And so this is my general one. And then I have, this is just uh, in my toolbox. So if I'm going to a travel race and I bring my toolbox, here's another list of, uh, of things I need to, 
I need to bring mm-hmm. and or, or or I'd like to bring. And then I um I don't know where if I have some other I have some other checklists in other places, but I just wanted to kind of show how I do it. And then if I'm going to an international race, um, then I also have checklists. Okay, this is my bike bag, this is my yeah. run bag, this is my swim bag, and I have a list of those too. So, you know, because most of the time, if you forget something small domestically, it's not such a big deal. You can always buy something. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I think having checklists is good, uh, not just for your performance, but I think for your stress level. Yeah. Like when when you, when you know, the night before you travel, even I get kind of stressed out. I think most people do as well. And you start going through your mind, do I have everything? Yep. And if you've checked it off that you have it and it's, it's, it's in your, it's in your stuff then that, that reduces that level uh, of stress and then you make less mistakes. Yep. No, you are spot on. And, uh, and uh, let me, let me share mine now. Yep. And I think this is, uh, we got to do one on travel tips because yep. this, is, this is a big deal. And I remember when I did my first Ironman, um, I actually started packing pretty much a month out because uh, yep. it was, you know, it was really, uh, okay. Sorry, there's something's happening there with, wait, oh, I just muted you by accident. Okay. Uh, so let's see, can you see my spreadsheet? Yep. Okay. Yep. So here I have my master checklist, race gear, pre-race gear, pre-race food, nutrition, warm gear, support gear, to it, just lots of stuff. Then I have a tab for different races because each race yep. is going to be a little bit unique. Uh, so, you know, tap for Kona, tap for uh, Whistler, uh, back in the old Silverman days. Yeah. You know, that, and, and Silverman uh, was the type of race that you had to, you know, prepare for all sorts of weather. And so trying to have, um, you know, a wide variety of things ready to go uh, was important. So, yeah. And, and so these can be extensive or, or, um, or, or simple. Well- but and I think is uh, I think I, I think well if you use them it uh, honestly it does help with the stress level for sure, absolutely for sure. So um, let's get back to some 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 more mistakes. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. Did you share the last one or did I? Uh, I think I did. Okay. So I was trying to go back to when I was just starting racing, and it's a mistake I wouldn't I would not make now, but um, I can remember uh, racing in the Big Bear Triathlon and um in california and uh i can remember setting my bike up in the morning or getting the bike out because you'd set your transition up in the morning and i put my bike together and i was like oh that's weird like my tires kind of flat not not all the way flat but it's it's low i'm like well that's weird i decided my pump pump it up good right don't even think twice about it swim then Halfway through the bike, flat tire. Oh. And, and, and here's the thing is I had a spare. I had spares with me, but I didn't think about it. Like, well, why was it flat? Well, it's flat because I had a slow leak. Yep. And, I, you know, I picked up something along the way somewhere, and it was just a slow enough leak. And it was something so simple. But once again, the stress of the morning, oh, my tire is low. Just fill it up. Yep. And, and not think that, you know, well, why is it flat? And. But it's something so simple as that. And that was, that was the first time I ever had a flat in a race. And it was purely my, that was, that's my error, right? It wasn't like I ran, I, I didn't run over something or whatever. It was just, I had a slow leak and I didn't, I didn't recognize it. Oh. Very, very simple. Well, I, okay. So I, I, I had something very similar to that. I'll, I'll, I'll bounce off that one. Uh, Ironman Arizona, I got neurotic about a slow leak. And uh, I realized I had a slow leak uh, while we were setting up the bikes the day before. And I just, I couldn't figure out what was going on. And so I, I remember I, I took my his rear wheel. So I take my rear wheel off, change the tube, pumped it up. We go walk around, you know, at the expo. I come back and I, you know, push it on. I'm like, it's still leaking. I just put a new tube in it. Take it off again. Change it out. Well, now it's getting to the point where we got to leave. We got to go back to the hotel. And I'm just getting neurotic. I'm like, how? what if I come here in the morning and it's going to be flat? And well, I go buy another tube, put another tube in. 
and uh, it, it looked like it was going to hold. I get there the next morning, and it's, it's flat again. And I'm like, what? The? I, it's a, <laughs> and I did the whole, you know, checking for anything in the, in the tire to see if there was something that was puncturing it each time. And uh, I just got neurotic. And, but it, um, eventually what it was, was I was uh, putting a valve extender on, and I wasn't using Teflon tape for the valve extender. And so uh, yeah. it was, that's where the leak was. It wasn't the tube at all. It was the extender. But fortunately, uh, I pumped it up one more time uh, before the race and it held long enough. And oddly enough, it was, it was flat when I picked up uh, the bike again, but I had my best bike race, my best bike split for that one. So that actually put me on to, really? yeah, that actually put me on to the idea of uh, lower pressure. That wasn't my idea, but, uh, you know, thinking back, to all the work that we've done on tire pressure and rolling resistance. I think my yeah. uh, rolling resistance actually dropped because I was losing air. <laughs> so. <laughs> it actually, your mistake helped you. And that's the I funny thing, so. right? Sometimes, sometimes the mistakes help us. Yeah, but now I, now I always use Teflon and, uh, and, and uh, yeah, you gotta, gotta just have that good gear set up ahead of time. So, John, do you have mistakes that are more related to um, uh, the tactics of a race? Uh, yes. Um, you know, I did write this down in my notes. Is uh, There's probably plenty of times where I misgaged what effort to do at a particular part of the race. Either yeah. overdoing it and overcooking uh not so much undercooking but maybe backing off too soon and uh and then losing uh losing touch with uh with whoever I was competing against so yeah i think um i think there's lots of uh lots of rooms and i've i've made mistakes in terms of getting lost on a race because i'm trying to focus so much on effort and intensity that if there's a a turn or uh, a funny spot uh, in the race that, it, that if you don't know the course well enough, it's easy to go the wrong way. And that, that actually happened to me in Greenwich, Connecticut back in the 90s, 90s or 80s. Uh, the, the run course went through a forested area and you're on a trail, which was sort of cool, but you're on a trail dodging you know, branches and what have you. And, and I was fighting for the top spot and uh, all of a sudden, I, the trail turned one way, and I ended up going another way and uh, burst through this bush, and I end up on a paved road, and I'm standing there, and I'm like, I shouldn't be here. And then all of a sudden, I see the, all these other runners coming towards me, and I'm like, where did they come from? How do I get back on the trail? But my brain had already... It, it just shut off. I had no idea where I was. And so uh, ended up just DNF in that race. But, uh, and I wasn't the only one. There was a lot of people got lost in the woods. But, uh, but yeah, that does happen where, uh, you know, you're focused so hard on intensity or the moment in the race that you can miss a turn, uh, which goes, speaks to that course recon that we talked about knowing the course. The more you know it, probably the less, less that's going to happen. How about you? Well, I, I want to ask you a question. How yeah. do you decide your intensity on any, any, any given moment? Well, I am, I, I am old school, and I really do go by rating of perceived exertion for the most part. So I really do um, sort of dial in based upon my perception of effort. Now, that being said, if I'm doing a sprint race, I know I can look down at my heart rate. My heart rate on the run especially needs to be up in the mid to high 140s and if it's not up there then i know i can go a little bit harder if i'm doing an ironman race i know i'm down around 120 so i can check that so that does help in terms of gauging intensity but it is for me i do a lot of, of perception of effort but you've got to expose yourself to those efforts so you got to know i mean that's what i often think training is about is learning how to perceive what effort you should be going at I lose you. Ted's up in Oregon and uh, his Wi-Fi had been a little bit spotty. So we actually uh, switched over, switched him over to another network and he may be frozen. 
So I'll, I'll keep going with some mistakes. I'll go back to some other mistakes that I posted on Facebook. Uh, and, and this has to go back with the, um, the stress level of prepping for a race. Okay, we lost Ted, but he'll call back in. Uh, prepping for a race is that uh, there is a race, a time trial uh, uh, here in town. And uh, it was a little stressful, you know, the week of work and uh, had a guest in from out of town uh, and, you know, trying to coordinate travel and picking people up and what have you. And race morning came and I got my car. And fortunately, I'm the kind of person who I like to get to a race early. Uh, I like to just be able to get to the, to the location and just sort of relax and prep for, uh, prep for the, uh, for the, for the effort. And Ted's almost back. Uh, so anyways, I had to pick up somebody, uh, went out to, uh, the course, which is on the other side of town, pull up, go in, check in, got my bib, came back, just sort of talking, open up the back of my car, get my bike out and there's no bike. And I'm like, what did I do? Sorry. I'm telling another story while you were getting logged back on. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm telling about the time that I went to. Uh, our time trial on the other side of town to open Oh, up and you didn't car. have your bike. I didn't have my bike. And I'm like, what the? But it, it all had to do with the stress prior to the event and just trying, you know, it was a stressful week at work, stressful trying to coordinate uh, travel with some other people in town and uh, just, just slipped my mind to put the bike in the car. Uh, and so now actually what I learned from that, now I did have time to go home, grab the bike, got back and, and did the race. Um, but uh, now what I've learned is I do usually pack up my bike the night before and put that in the car. That's not a bad thing. And you, I, I, I've actually forgot my bike just to, just to meet someone to go training. Yep. But it was down, we were going to meet at the M and ride out to Gene. And for my house, it's a long way. So I drive all the way out there for like 40 minutes and gone. No bike. <laughs> so I got everything else. I got my shoes. I got my helmet. I got, you know, I have everything. But the most important thing, the bike. Uh, it, our mind just gets focused on, on something else. So. But you were talking about yeah. the, um, the effort during a race and making yeah. mistakes on that. How about you? I agree with you. It's so much about training. And knowing, uh, knowing where you are, but I always, uh, not always, but I try and do a little tests of myself, right? I used to always do um, the, the, the loop climb uh, at Red Rock. Mm -hmm. And so it's about, about 20 minute effort. So I can kind of gauge an FTP off of that. And at least for the bike. So I could kind of see, uh, kind of see where I was at. And then um, for, you know, let's say I was, I don't know, like 250 watts or whatever. And I'd take, you know, for a half, I'd take 85% of that. If it's a sprint, it's like, okay, a 100% of that. And um, so I would I, a little bit more in tune with my body now mm -hmm. uh, to go where I need to be. Um, but I'm like, but then I've, I've also found that, you know, heart rate can be tricky especially when you get into like a hot, humid race, yep. you know, your, your heart rate is, is artificially elevated or it's, it's not artificial, it's elevated. It's, it is what it is, but you still, you still can go harder. Um, and, or like, you know, not sleeping well the night before you can have an increased heart rate. So, uh, so perceived exertion is, is, is big. The one thing for me on perceived exertion, the mistake I, I make often is running too fast the first couple of miles. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's a, you know, that's a tactical mistake that I've made many, many times and I can't seem, seem to get past it. Cause I feel good. Like I get off the bike and I'm just like, okay, let's go, you know, yeah. and two to three miles down the road. It's like, Oh man, that, uh, that first two to three miles is, is, is not good. And so the one thing I've learned, I think um, with that is it's never your day. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever heard that, heard that term. It's like, well, you know, you start running, oh, man, today is my day. You know, I, I can run like 620 mile, uh, you know, off the bike and a half because I'm doing it like the first two miles and 620. And no, it's not your day. You, you, you cannot do that. Even though you feel good for the first couple of miles, you can't because you have not trained like that. Oh. And 
so I, I, I have this new saying when I race, it's not, it's not your day. And yeah. it never, it's, it's never your day. You uh -huh. are what you tra you are what your training says you are. You're not, you know, you, you don't have super days. That you are, you're, you are correct. However, I, uh, I, I do that make that mistake too, but I also allow myself to run the risk to let that magic happen. And, uh, and, and so sometimes you have to live on the edge and you, you have to run the risk that, that, and you, and you know this, I know you're right on the edge when you're racing. I mean, there's no way that you oh, can yeah. sub 430 half Ironman and not teeter on that edge of destruction. And, yeah. and you do that. And, uh, yeah, but, 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 but it's a, but it's a fine edge, John. That's yes, what I'm getting it at. Is. Cause if I dip too much into that red zone, yep. It, it could take two or three miles to recover, mm -hmm. right? So, like, um, yeah, it's 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 running a six twenty versus a six thirty. That right, mile. right, right, right. It's it's that fine. Um, like, if 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 I'm well prepared and know exactly where I should be, I I need to be running that six thirty, not the six twenty. And I, and that's I mean, not like, oh, I should be running a seven. Yeah, but I, I think that's what, you know, you're dialing in that range, a 620 yeah. versus 630. Uh, you know, I think a mistake that a lot of people would make is that they're trying to run a 730 when they should be running an 830. And that gap exactly. is too big. But teetering on that edge, I mean, that's what you got to sort of play with at times. So, but I, would, I was lucky, and, and this is going back to planning and, and you know, trying – try nothing new on race day you know back when i uh, started racing i was with a club and every week we uh, had a competitive 5k race on wednesday night every yeah. week and so what i ended up doing was trying all different uh, pacing strides rather than try and do the same thing every time you know one time i'd go out and i'd say okay i'm going to negative split this race all right next time i'm going to try to even split it okay now i'm going to try to go out fast and then try to hold on and, and it goes back to that experience that, you know, you gotta, you've got to try these different pace strategies even, uh, and then employ them during the race. Yeah. And, and, you know, and it's hard and, you know, to, how do you mimic, for example, like a half or an Ironman, what it's going to be to get off of the bike and, and actually, and actually run hard. Yeah. Or, you know, like, like I know we do brick sessions, right. We'll go for a long bike ride and then run a couple of miles. But a couple of miles does not make uh, a half marathon or a or a marathon, mm -hmm. right? No, uh, it, it makes it difficult. No, and I'll actually say that you know, even though it's been fun to do the the virtual events, it's actually been hard to really, for me, to race them hard. Uh, it, it's it, it maybe it's because I'm older. Uh, I don't know, but um, it. You know, I do enjoy the race environment. Without that, it's um, it's hard to hard to find that pace. And maybe it is because I'm mostly racing on perception versus some metric. But yeah, yeah, I think that that's that's part of it. So you know, other than other than that, um, some other race tactics that I've made mistakes what was not understanding weather mm -hmm. and what 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 weather does to you, and in particular, what hot humid climates will do to you because you know we live obviously it's hot and, you know train all summer in the heat I, i'm someone that kind of i don't know relishes the the hot days in vegas and um but uh you know i've i've made that, those mistakes before too of, of racing in hot humid climates and not dialing back a little mm -hmm. and paying and paying the price i don't yeah. know if you've if you've had experiences with that as well well, I, uh, I, you know, when I started racing, it was back in New York. And so some our, our summers would often be 95 degrees and 90% humidity type of deal. And uh, I remember racing on Coney Island and uh, not uh, dialing it back and uh, learning the lesson of what a heat injury was uh, because it was so hot. Uh, I remember uh, running down the boardwalk and, you know, finally making it to the finish and uh, I was I was destroyed for multiple days simply because of a uh, heat injury, throwing up the whole yep. the whole nine yards. So, uh, but yeah, no, I think weather is a big deal. Um, I got I got 
that maybe this ties into, I got to tell my dad's story. Uh, I did, do. Yeah, I did get my, my folks into uh, triathlon back when I raced in New York and uh, we were doing the Hempstead triathlon. My dad's not a great swimmer. He's never really liked, liked swimming. We had a laugh about it tonight because it came up in our phone conversation and um, he doesn't like putting his face in the water. So he's not, he's not really a comfortable swimmer, but my dad's a honey badger and he'll do the swim and then he'll do the bike and then he'll do a run and he'll love it. And so uh, we this is an ocean swim down in Hempstead, uh, New York. And uh, I think the swim was maybe only 500 meters and it was parallel to the uh, shore. And uh, we're wave start. So he was older and got started and he, he was going to be last out. Okay. Uh, but what happened was he's he's swimming parallel to the um, to the to the shore, but the lifeguard because he was the last one he had an escort, but the lifeguard got between him and the shore, and what he didn't realize he was just following the lifeguard, but he he didn't realize the lifeguard was following him, and he got <laughs> stuck in a, a riptide and he started going dragged out <laughs> from the shore, and so. His 500 meter swim turned into probably a mile, maybe even a mile and a half swim. It was, he was so far out from uh, from shore, but uh, he was just following the lifeguard. He just <laughs> he didn't know what to do, which speaks to you got to know the course. Oh. Yeah. So that's that, that's interesting. You know, um, back before I was I ever did a triathlon, my wife uh, was was doing triathlons, and I can remember watching her at Oceanside. Mm-hmm. and uh and watching people swim at oceanside and i can still remember someone actually more than one swim oh we lost you again oh there you go you're back oh okay so i guess i can i was watching her swim and i was watching other people swim and i watched people swim a u-turn because they weren't you know they weren't sighting oh. and that was a good lesson even you know what it's better to sight more often yeah. and and swim straight it is for you to turn and 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 get the get the direction uh right um i mean john you're you're an excellent swimmer and you, you spot very well but i'm sure you've seen you've seen many people swimming off course yep no that and and that's that's a huge mistake is uh, one way you can improve your swim is to learn to swim straight, but not necessarily learn to swim straight, but learn how to sight frequently so that you swim straight. Because there's, there's so many times that you think you're swimming straight, but yet you're swimming crooked. And, you know, there's always stories of, you know, bumping into people or a lot of times you say, oh, this person bumped into me. But a, a lot of times it's actually... Uh, and you know, for I'll use myself, I'm going the wrong way, and all of a sudden I'm running, running into someone. I uh, when I do a local race, there's a a, a particular athlete I, I like having um, at the race because I drift to my left, and he drifts to his right, but we almost swim the same pace. So I always try to get on his right side, <laughs> and so he's always drifting into me, and I'm drifting into him, and we stay straight together. So it actually works out pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a, a common, a, a really common mistake in, in, in swimming is, mm-hmm. is do that. Um, I can remember watching a, a Mythbusters episode once and uh, they, this is kind of where I learned it is they blindfolded people mm. and they had to walk straight across a field and nobody could do it. No. They were like, just, they were going in circles mm-hmm. and, and literally if you don't look when you're swimming yep. and you don't sight, you will swim in a circle. You know, um, but actually, that would be a little fun exercise to do one day. The, you know, we have a club swimming event and say, okay, let's go up to Lake Mead and don't sight. Yep. Just just swim and see yeah. what happens. Yeah. When I did some scuba work uh, years and years ago, we uh, had a blacked out mask. And the whole point of that was to show you that even if you were going to try to swim straight with a blacked out mask, you couldn't. And so, yeah. uh, you know, you know, brings up the danger of cave diving and what have you, you need to, you, you need something to sight. Uh, now you can sometimes sight the, uh, you know, the, the, the bottom of the lake, if you can see it. 
And so there are times yeah. like in, in Lake Mead even where the visibility is really good and I can pick out a rock underwater. I can sight uh, on the surface and I, can, I put my face down the water and I see that rock and I say, okay, now I'm gonna swim to that rock. And now I don't have to sight as frequently at that point. But yep. it is- but that, That's more the exception than the rule. Yeah, no, that's right. Um, it, it, you, it, it all has to do with water clarity, but you do really need to practice the sighting. But that's what our, our Lake Mead swims are great for, is practice sighting both off the right hand and off your left hand. You know, we all have a favorite side, but it's good to be able to sight from either stroke. Exactly. So um, the last area I want to talk about was, and, and it's something that we, we've talked about before as well, is nutrition mistakes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so These are and, painful. And, and, <laughs> and, and, and not and not necessarily you know uh trying things that maybe didn't work but like utter just dis disasters yeah. so do you have some of those oh well yeah you know i do <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'll let you go first because i uh, okay. i want to hear yours because mine mine have been uh mistakes for a variety of reason but yeah no let well well i think in, in general i mean we can categorize a lot of it as you know don't try something new on race day that, that that you haven't tried but for for me it's more um i get into situations especially on the bike where i'm biking well and i forget mm -hmm. to eat and you know, I'll look down. My twenty miles in, I haven't had a sip. I haven't, um, I haven't eaten anything. I, you know, I've taken in no nutrition. So if you add that in, like, say it's a half, you know, you're you're already four and a half as far as or water in. That mm -hmm. that to me is probably my biggest one of my biggest areas. Well, I actually have I have a mistake for you about you. And you'll remember this, I'm sure, when, okay. I, when I started telling it. It was uh, uh, something that, you know, pre-race, I think we were talking about something or, you know, the week before, this was Austria, as LMC, uh, yep. World Championship 70.3. And uh, for whatever reason, I think we were got talking about nutrition, you showing that we, what, what you were using. And, you know, it was, it was, it was a bottle of this or that, and, uh, you, or you told me. And so, anyways, you, were, you went out in the way before me. And, uh, and then I, 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 you know, followed you. And so you were ahead of me on, um, on the bike segment. And if you remember, there was a bridge, uh, one part of the bike segment, and then you go up the steep hill. And I think that was probably about 10 K into the bike. Maybe was that about right? Yeah. And so I'm biking along and I crossed that bridge and there's different bottles. And then I saw your bottle. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> and I'm, I bike by it and I'm like, ah, I think that's Ted's. Uh, <laughs> I know, and, it, and it definitely was, no. but, but I learned to the, at that point to always have a backup. No. Ah. So that was my prime. Yeah. But, but I all, uh, now on a, on a, on a half or, or full, I always make sure I have almost double what I need. Because yeah. you know, honestly, the, the the weight of the calories in, in gels and chews and stuff is so small. Mm -hmm. So I did I did lose that, and I was like, you know what? I that was my primary thing was yeah. that. But I I, I my my I had a, a bunch of blocks still. Um, but yes, that, that absolutely did happen. Yeah. And the fact that when you we finished that race and you told me you saw it, I'm like, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> And then, but then the other lesson I learned from that is I still use those bottles for a while. I don't use that system anymore, but how I place them in my, uh, in, in, in my kit or in my, you know, my, in my top. Mm -hmm. So instead of putting them this way, I actually shoved them this way. Mm -hmm. So they wedged, so they wedged in and they never fell out again, mm -hmm. but it, it, it's a little harder to get out, but I was like, okay, but it's more secure. Right? Mm -hmm. So uh, that was a, that was the lesson learned there, but I'd already learned the lesson of losing nutrition at a, in a different way, yeah. and in, and understanding how important nutrition is. Um, I, I make sure to always have extra. Yeah, no, that's great, and and again, that's a that's a recovery during the race. A mistake happens, and you knew you had some type of backup, so you were fine. Now yeah. I've I've had I've dropped nutrition as well. 
And I finally have learned that uh, I need to stop and pick it up uh, because uh, I've made the mistake and I didn't recover and, uh, it, and was just short of whatever I needed. Uh, so I remember in Boulder that happened to me, I lost a bottle and I actually stopped, turned around, went back, got it and, you know, sacrificed the time, but I probably saved time in the long run. Yeah, yeah. And, and, I, and I think that kind of the take home message of everything we talked about tonight is, mm -hmm. is make mis you're going to make mistakes, mm -hmm. but, but learn from them and do your very best to learn from other people's mistakes. I mean, that's why we're doing this yeah. is so hopefully, you know, if people listen to this, if they, they can learn from us and then talk to other triathletes, right? That, that, that might actually might be the biggest mistake people make is not talking to other triathletes, mm -hmm. right? Like after a race, talk to people, find out, Hey, what went well in your race today? You know, and people will always tell you the mistakes they made because mm -hmm. you know, people are oftentimes, I hate to say it, but they're looking for an excuse, right? But that's a good opportunity to learn from other people's mistakes. If you really take it to heart, and I think oftentimes we don't chat with other triathletes and, uh, you know, learn from their mistakes and, and, and learn from the things they did well. Um, we always, you know, humans are by nature very much, you know, they want to make the mistake themselves. Yeah. You know, rather than learning from others. Well, and, and you got to write it down because, uh, you know, thinking ahead to this um, tonight, actually, I went back and I, I grabbed my old training log. And yep. I've got all notes and everything in here. And it, 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 I think it's really important after a race, soon after a race, is to write a race report. And not for anyone to read necessarily, but for yourself. So that yep. you can go back and you can look at it later on and say, oh, these are some things I did great in. And these are some things I didn't do so great in. Uh, and, and, or sometimes, you know, I feel great after a race, if I had some time, something happen, but yet I was able to recover and absorb that, uh, then I hit the finish line and I feel really accomplished because you're right. Mistakes will happen, happen. They do, you know, you just, you have to minimize them, but then when they do happen, you gotta, you gotta overcome them. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, I think we covered a lot of mistakes and without embarrassing ourselves too, too much. Yeah. So this was a lot of fun. No, this is, and, uh, and, and, and yeah, I think it, it is a matter of talking with people and, uh, you know, we're, we're not alone because, uh, we, we posted that on that this was going to be the topic tonight and boy, there was a lot of, a lot of other mistakes that others made. So yeah, maybe it actually made me feel better. <laughs> yeah. All right, Ted. Well, Hey, happy training. Thank you. You too. Stay cool out there. Yeah. Going to be drinking lots. Yep. And uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll do this again, and we'll we'll have a another fun topic. So this is a lot of fun. You got it. Okay. Take care. All right. Bye.